In this video, I'm going to show you what NeoByte is and what its differences are with NeoVim. So what is it? It's a standalone app. It's not related to your terminal application and runs a NeoVim GUI. Notice here on the top, it says NeoByte. And on the other hand, I'm going to switch to Kitty. This is my terminal application. So NeoByte basically is just another application that you install. I can search for it in my apps. Notice that it shows up here and it's just a regular application. So what are the benefits? One of the main ones I would say is smooth scrolling. It has some cursor animations. Let me show you these two. I'm just going to unfold everything. Later, MFU unfolds everything. Notice that I'm in NeoByte right now, and I'm going to scroll up and down in this file. Notice that I'm going up right now. It's really smooth. I don't see a lot of artifacts. Works quite well. On the other hand, I'm going to switch to Kitty right now. This is the exact same file that I have open. I'm going to scroll up, and I'm going to scroll down. And you will be able to see the difference. Let me switch back to NeoByte one more time so you can see it again. Going up here in NeoByte. And it looks way smoother compared to Kitty. This cursor animations is the way that you see the cursor moving around. That's one of the things you can disable it or change it to something else. When you open a pop-up, the background is blurred. I'm going to open LazyGit right now, Theater GG. And notice here on the background, you can see it blurred. It's also decent with big markdown files. It's smoother than Kitty. I have a 15,000 line file that I have here. It's this one. I'm going to open it. Just have to give it a few seconds for it to load, we could say. And then I can start moving around and it's going to be decent. I'm scrolling down in this file. I'm going to go to the last line right now. Notice that it's 15,000 lines. If I open the exact same file in Kitty, notice that I'm in Kitty here at the top. I'm going to scroll in this file and you're going to see that it's quite laggy. So overall, I would say it performs better than my terminal application. If you want to find out more about other benefits, you can go to the features page. I'm going to leave a link here. I'm going to leave a link to this guide in the video description in case you want to follow along and just copy and paste the commands. How do you install NeoByte on macOS? The only thing I did was run this brew command. I found it on the main website. I left the link here. And after installing it, I didn't change anything. It just picked up my NeoVim configuration automatically. So after you install it, just open it and it'll work like your regular NeoVim instance. There are some command line options that you can set. This is where I set the frame to transparent. This disables the menu bar here on the top. Otherwise, it would say there NeoByte. So this is where I disable it. You will be able to find my config.tml file in my dot files. Let me go there real quick. This is where I change the frame. I set it to transparent. This is a macOS only option, as you can see here. But here are other options, full, none. And I left the link here to the documentation as well. Just make sure that you create that file. Here are the commands. With this, you can create the directory and the file. Let me copy this real quick. I'm going to go back to my terminal, paste this. And here's the file. In my specific case, this file points to my dot files. I'm in the dot config directory here. I'm going to list all my files. And as you can see here, NeoByte is pointing to my dot files. It's just a symlink. But if you don't want to configure a symlink, it's fine. You can just copy and paste my configuration to the file directly. In this same config.tml file, notice that I have it open here. You can set other options, maximized, vsync. You can disable it, WSL, and you can set the font size. But I'll show you where I changed the font in a minute. In case you want to run specific options only in NeoByte, there's a variable that can let NeoVim know if it's running inside NeoByte or not. I'm just going to copy this. Just going to paste it here. It's a command. I'm going to hit enter. Notice that it says here v true. So that means that I'm running inside NeoByte. Let me switch to my terminal and I'm going to paste the exact same command. I'm going to paste this here in Kitty. Notice that the variable is undefined. Why is this important? Because this allows you to run some options only when inside NeoByte and not on your regular NeoVim instance. So here you can set a conditional if inside NeoByte and you can run all of your options inside. I'm going to show you how I set them up real quick. I set them under my options.lua file. Let me switch back to Kitty. I have that file open here, options.lua. Notice the path on the top, config options.lua. Here's the condition that I was talking about. If NeoByte and I set all the options inside, here's where I set the font name or the font family and the size. Here's where I set the refresh rate. Notice that this is only effective when not using vSync. Here's where you can specify the animation length. The default is 0.06. You can also specify the cursor trail size. I'm using the default here. And here you can set the different cursor animations. I set it to this sonic boom, but you can test out the different ones. What is this cursor animation? Let me show you this sonic boom real quick. I'm going to get to insert mode and you're going to see something different there, an animation. Let me do it again. You can see there, if I go to insert mode, it animates. If I go out of insert mode, it animates as well. You will not be able to paste text in NeoByte. I had that issue. There is a way to fix it in the FAQ. I left the link here. So to fix it, I just added the following code to my options.lua file. You can find the code here. But all of this is in my options.lua file. Notice that here are 
the ones that fix copy and paste. And here are the other options that you need to set at the bottom. You will also be able to find all of this in my dot files. Just go to this folder, Neobin, Lua config options Lua, and it's already uploaded to GitHub. All of the different options that you can set can be found in the configuration page. Let me go there real quick. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see all of the different ones here. Here is for example, where you can see the different type of animations. Here they are, the cursor settings, the trail size, the cursor particles. What is this? It's railgun, torpedo. So you can test them out, see which one you like or disable it altogether. But let's say that you wanna know the value of one of the variables. You can just echo this part or you can run it this way as well. G colon and the name of the variable. Let me show you real quick. I'm just gonna copy, paste this and it shows here at the bottom or I can also run it like this. Just gonna copy and I'm gonna paste this, hit enter and it shows you the same thing. What are some of the, we could say issues? Not specifically an issue, but it's just something that is not compatible. I cannot view and paste images the same way that I do in Kitty, but that's because Kitty has image support. What am I talking about? Let me go to Kitty real quick. I have this file in which I have some images. Notice here that I have images. If I hover over them, you will be able to see the images. Here's another one. And there are several images in this file, but this doesn't work in Neobyte. Let me open that same file. I have it here, test images. And if I hover over it, nothing happens. This is not a big deal for me because I can always use Kitty for that. If you want to know how to view and paste images in Neovim, I have a video in which I go over everything in detail. You'll be able to find that video in the top right corner. If you like the way my setup looks like, if you want to know how I create this folds, all the key maps that I have when I'm working with markdown files, I have a video. You'll be able to find that video as well on the top right corner. I haven't investigated how to open multiple instances of Neobyte. If you know how to do that, let me know down in the comments. I use Tmux a lot, but I don't think that's going to be available. But if you know a solution to open multiple instances that point to multiple directories that you can get to using keyboard shortcuts, let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.